I'm, I'm, I'm always guarding against being clueless. Um, so, which is a good thing to guard against. <laughs> Especially when you're often clueless. What? Especially when you're often clueless. I know. I'm like, I'm like, I said it, I'm like, I opened it up for Luke. I'm going to get hit. Okay. Um, so, um, uh, <laughs> I said something. I did a Twitter post today because I want Eli to get, and Martin to get back on um, Twitter. And so I said, you know, has anybody got Anybody got that video of Eli singing the Mighty Python Lumberjack song? Or I, I'm just going to try to, I'm going to try to embarrass him and to get back on. Uh, but anyway, so I lost my train of thought. No, it was like the Miles thing. So it's not funny. So, so, uh, but with, you know, the, this problem of, of, of that you really notice how white people duel and non white people fight, right? And there's such a fucking difference. And what did you you said? You have a term for it, Luke. It's it's not it, it's limited. You, you said. Yeah, the the lack of restraint. Right, restraint. Right, uh, yeah. is there? Re, it's restrained violence. Yeah. Um, uh, what I was taught when I was young is, you, as long as you're not mad, you'll probably not do get in trouble. Right. Right. If as long as you're fighting and you're not mad, uh, if you, the minute you get mad, you'll get stupid. So. Right. Well, that doesn't work today. No, no. All right. Anyway, so uh, all right. So what what else we got going on? Anything else going on this week? I'm having a riot with Twitter. Sorry, man. I'm just fucking have a goddamn riot over it. I mean, he's got he's going to put long form on, right? Long for oh, I'm fucking back in the game, man. Right? Because that's our advertising. Right, uh, we're, that means we can use Twitter to raise revenue. It's going to make it easier for us. He's going to put uh, it lost one thing. He has long form. He can and and revenue. He can compete with Facebook, and once he puts in video, he competes with TikTok and YouTube. And I'm like, okay, yeah, that sounds like a good fucking game here. Uh, so I'm 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 excited. I just hope it gets there so that we can. We can use it as a, the advertising channel because we were doing okay. Well, you know, I was getting off fifteen hundred grand, fifteen hundred dollars a month for this. I mean, and that's way more than you know was was costing. And then uh, John was getting uh, almost three thousand a month. Right? That's not a lot, but it's enough to, you know, I mean, just enough to pay for things. Right? What am right. I? What's the so, makes it worth keeping on doing. Yes. I mean, the whole thing is you need a path, a revenue path to get to where you can ask for real revenue, real, real donations. <laughs> All right. Anything else we got? What else we got? Twitter. It, you know, one of the things that, that Musk did recently, you know, he reached directly out to uh, Tim Koch over at, at Apple, right? And so one, one of the things that demonstrates is when you bypass all these gatekeepers, you can actually accomplish things. Right. And I don't think the gatekeepers are happy about that. They don't want yeah, that. No. They don't want that reminder out there. Our threat of making his own phone probably had something to do with it too. Well, it hit their oh, stock. Yeah, sure. Yeah. It, it that's, took their stock below trend line. Yeah. Right. That, that's how you get past the gatekeepers. Once yeah. you start, <laughs> once you start blowing up the gatekeepers, man, then, then the game changes completely. So. He keeps doing that. We're going to be looking at a, a very different landscape. People's perceptions change because of the internet first, and then they act in the real world is what Elon Musk is demonstrating. So yeah. obviously, because this is this is the channel in which everything yeah. gets out to everyone at once. Yep. <clears throat> and he's saying one person can do it. They I just love that. that, power that go ahead, sorry. Being able to change people's perception by tweeting something. Trump could do it. That's why they banned him from Twitter. Right, right. But now Elon owns it. So right now it just looks like he could use it as his private tool to turn the sheep wherever he'd like them. He's also a master of propagandist. The, the propaganda just through uh, humor and ridicule. <laughs> I mean, is you know, uh, you know, irony. He does. He does it. What is it? Is a humor, irony, and ridicule. Right. I mean, and he's a fucking master at it. And then the data backs him up. All these people are, I mean, there are more people use Twitter now than ever before. Well, he knows. 
they huh? say things like, we're going to do things that aren't operational. And then he goes, go ahead. And then they look dumb. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, and my favorite thing is his, uh, he's like, we're going to, we're going to publish the data on how the Twitter allied with the government. To That's going to be a fucking shit storm. Ah, uh, can't wait. That's one of the things that I, I'm, I'm excited about. That I've not been excited about a lot in the Elon stuff, but that one's that one's I'm excited about coming out. So, or even the 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 willingness of people to talk about how the how many times the government lied to us about the vaccine, which isn't a vaccine. It's a I mean, that was a fucking bunch of nonsense, right? That's going to go down. Is and they're just trying to double down on defending their actions, and they just can't. I mean, and I'm just I, I saw another guy come out today and he said because it was same shit. I mean, just, look, we saw the scarring on the manipulation. We, the the first guys who saw it saw the scar, right? I mean, you know, and then he goes to describe what. What that's what that material did to bridge the gap between bats and whatever those little chip monkey things are in Asia and uh, humans. He says, well, you have to do that on purpose, right? You can't. That doesn't. There's no. There, the, how do you get? How do you look, design something specifically to attach to human proteins instead of those little fucking lemur things, right? I mean, how how, how do you do that? I mean, nature doesn't doesn't leave a scar <laughs> from a CRISPR insertion when you do it on that. <laughs> and they say, and they were well-intentioned because they're trying to protect the sanctity of science. Well, then you just disprove the fucking thing. Right, right. Yeah. The, we knew, we knew all that. It's, it's a uh, December, 2022. Yeah, knew everything you were talking about. December twenty nineteen. Yeah, no, that's it. We because all the data was all the data was there, and anybody worth anything in the scientific realm, right in the space of DNA, was saying exactly that. That this is the the chance of mutation is so low, and the obviousness of the change in the structure of the proteins <laughs> is not only that, but CRISPR is like. Pop, you can just buy a CRISPR kit and look at yeah, I mean, right now for <laughs> relatively short yeah. money. And, and it's like, well, you know, the problem is the public is a fearful and these dipshits want to, they want influence, power, attention, right? That's the problem of the their infrastructure, right? And that's the problem of their incentive. And then they, they go out and say to justify and believe the science. <laughs> you just fucking falsified. Yeah. <laughs> Probably believe in the science by trying to preserve the legitimacy of science by making claims you couldn't prove because you were uh, fearful of non-compliance because the people don't trust you enough to comply with you. <laughs> it's just, my head makes my head explode. Well, you could just try being speaking the truth all the time, so the public got used to trusting you again, and then you'd be in much better shape. <laughs> but we couldn't get attention if we did that, and then nobody would listen to us. Yeah, well, it seems like that's a pretty good idea for what we can tell. <laughs> Sorry, just the irony of what is it? Three years? It's like twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, right? It's three years we've been yeah. clusterfuck, burn the economy. Right for 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 a, for a thing that affects little old people who live in dirty dirty hospitals and retirement homes. Yeah. It's been frustrating to watch. That's for sure. One of one of the things that I don't know that that's starting to look like it's coming to pass is you know when you use fear as your lever, as soon as uh, as soon as it starts to fall apart, it fear turns to anger. Yes. So. yes. And I'm like, I just wanted to avoid the whole fucking conversation because how do you prove it to people who lack the knowledge? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I'm, I kind of had a frustrating day yesterday because one of our long-term followers clearly bought into the, the hoax that there's no such thing as viruses. 
to sort of start it. Like there's a couple of Facebook posts yeah. about it, and then some fucking retard wrote a book about it. I'm like, okay, well, you know, if you want to tell me that, I mean, I can't falsify the existence of virus because the oh, it's it, the overwhelming. I mean, I need some theory to compete with it, right? I mean, I need something to argue against to show this is false because this guy is saying, well, you, you're you're just a gatekeeper and you're following the dogma. I'm not following the dogma. Give me a fucking opposing theory that I can use to falsify the existing one. But I mean, I can't. I mean, I know a lot about it. I'm not a specialist or anything, but I certainly understand the virus life cycle, generally how it works, you know? I mean, the the the, the, the difference between what I know and what the professional knows is which molecules do what in what context right i mean that's the hard part is like these molecules are fucking insanely complicated right i mean what they do and how they fit into protein structures or i mean but i mean to tell people that an rna dna sequence is you can't fucking make that promise it's a lot it's a life form that or a proto life form its sole purpose is to evolve <laughs> what the makes that promise you know i'm like the only way you make right. that problem is, that, I mean, Jesus. And then, 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 then let's put it into a hostile environment where it has to evolve. <laughs> to say it's not gonna. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, yeah, you can't, it's it. like that whole thing was going on for years. And I'm like, I can't get involved in this discussion because what can I say? I mean, you can't argue against an ignorant public who wants to believe the, the nonsense. It's like, I don't know. It's it's not complicated, so it looks like they manufactured it. We know how it <laughs> its mechanism, right? We know who it's affecting, and it's not dangerous. Yet this fucking vaccine is like it's worse than the goddamn <laughs> worse than the goddamn virus itself. Jesus, it's like it's exactly what we've been warning people about with genetic engineering. Don't be overconfident in your ability to control. I mean, it's. Jurassic Park, right? I mean, it's the fucking lesson of the Jurassic Park movie. Don't be overconfident that you figured out how to defeat a thing whose sole existence over billions of years, or at least hundreds of millions, is, is to figure out how to defeat things and try to stop it. I mean, Jesus. I mean, even look at like, sorry, am I ranting? Mm -hmm. Is it okay? Yeah. So like, let's say you have a strand of DNA, right? Ours are really long, right? So the thing is, uh, the way our DNA works is you you have something change or something get inserted or deleted, right? I mean, that's what happens. Or, uh, and a lot of it happens to do with re uh, regulation, right? Stuff is just accumulated and turned off, right? It, it, there's just a huge inventory of primitive shit like they're like, trying to, I was going to spin something about how Luke was looked like a, looked like a Neanderthal, but I... I couldn't come up with it fast enough. But <laughs> yeah, there's this huge, huge strand of stuff that's reserves, right? But the way a virus works, a lot of viruses work is they don't have a long strand. They have little parts. Right. So it's like it's like where we have to where we have to do something hard to get information in there. They're just like here, here. It's like going to a fucking frat party and sharing the chicks. I mean, it, it's just like path. These things go out there and they can recombine with anything. You have no idea what's going to happen. It's like you know, what do you call pickup sticks or what's the game where you throw all the cards on the fifty-two pickup? It's like you can't. How do you out compute that fucking thing? I think you just described the same thing twice, though. Sharing all the chicks and fifty-two pickup. Yeah. I'm laughing because life has become so absurd lately. <laughs> it's just, it's Don't worry, it's gonna get way worse. No, right, thanks. Right. It'd be it'd be funny if they couldn't vote. If it wouldn't, they couldn't vote. We wouldn't have this problem. It would never have arisen. It was it was way worse. It, it, our ancestors thought women would make bad decisions. They never assumed they could destroy the whole fucking country. Well, Civilization. They had help. Great. Yeah. Fe fe feminine men are worse. So. 
men without chests. Have you got to that place in your life where you know you can look at a guy and notice his pussy? Have you got to that place yet? It's like those most guys. Were, I think most, most of us were at that place when we were six. God, I don't know. Me. Fuck. Anyway, uh, so this guy is arguing with me about this, and I'm like, give me a fucking theory. I mean, I'll, I'll, I can work with an opposing theory, but that's how critique works. They just give you a bunch of complaints, but they don't propose an alternate theory that's equally open to criticism. So they try to put you on the defensive and like, there's no defensive here unless I have an alternative, right? I mean, you're not, you're not, you know, or they say, well, you, this is science. Well, it's not fucking science. <laughs> science doesn't mean I have to prove something. It means I need a competing thing. <laughs> I need a com something to compete with to right. test the balance difference between. Them, right? <laughs> I mean, you can't prove anything. They, can't, they, they claim it's true because you can't falsify it, but you can't yeah. falsify it because it's make believe. <laughs> because you know, what? I've, I've, I've seen that around on Telegram about viruses not being right. real, and usually the explanation was something about uh, that's cells or something. There are, uh, back in the 1800s, when they were inventing the germ theory of disease, they were trying to set criteria for what's, 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 a, what's an, a life form that attacks the disease, right? Today, we have this spectron of prions to viruses to bacteria to eukaryotic bacteria to um, parasites, right, uh, on up. And that's pretty much that's pretty much the the developmental the hierarchy of developmental sophistication from an ordin a non life molecule that interferes all the way up to a, a fully advanced life form that's acting of its own reproduction. But I mean that's just the same the spectrum. And I'm like I, I don't know how to argue with. It. I mean we know how a life a virus life cycle works. We know that why they can't uh, survive outside the a host for very long. We know why they vary in ability to survive on it. We know their transmissibility. I mean, we have like, there's like, I did a search, there's like 5 billion papers on it. I mean, it was something like 5 billion, 5 billion references and 50 million sites or something like that. I mean, it's it, it was so absurd, right? I can't even talk about it, right? I mean, and I'm like, well, give me something to work with. No, you have to prove it. Like, prove what? You gave me four criteria. We've satisfied the four criteria. There's all this body of knowledge out there. I'm willing to falsify it if I have something to, with which to claim it's false. And, of course, they come back with, <coughs> you know, they don't have anything. You need to prove it. I'm like, you can't, you can't justify anything. You can only prove something survives from falsification. I have nothing to falsify this again you got to give me a competing solution what is finally i get i get i know what the answer of course the whole time right i know the answer which is it's a conspiracy theory and so the guy the guy finally admits what his conspiracy theory is i'm like yeah i know the answer it's conspiracy theory you don't actually have a competing theory you have only the theory that there's a conspiracy going on here like, there might well be but that doesn't <laughs> falsify the existence of viruses or any of the effects of viruses if you tell me, well, masks don't block power, and I was saying that, I don't know, certainly, I must have been saying that in January of 20, right? I mean, I was saying it right away, there's no way a mask can do this. Only thing a mask can do is because you can stop your fucking monkey fingers from touching all this fucking shit and then rubbing it on your face. I mean, that's that's what a mask does, but it doesn't prevent any aerosol from getting through. What kind of person even believes that kind of nonsense? So... But then we get all this data that shows it. But then there's the faithful out there arguing it. It's no wonder. You know, I feel like I'm I'm watching you guys' faces. I realize I'm talking too much. And I'm saying, I'm just catching up to the frustration of the rest of the conservatives at this point. I guess I'm just slow. Uh... You don't start at frustration like the rest of them do. You understand what's going on. So you're not frustrated by regular stuff. But they are all the time. Oh, we'll see. It's hard on them because they see the inconsistency in people's behavior and they saw the masks as like signaling you were part of some cult yes. and then they claim that you're part of a cult from behind that thing it's untenable for people 
<clears throat> like they shouldn't be able to exist in real. What's going on here? <laughs> Just imagine that mindset. Put that damn thing on, and then looking at somebody else going, "You're weird because you're not doing this." It's like, Come on. <laughs> the absurdity of that thought process. <laughs> They're just afraid, right? They're just afraid. And they believe that if they do the same thing everybody else does, that they'll be okay. But that's the social, they, they rely, they live in a world of social proof, right? Yeah, but it showed that there wasn't enough social co cohesion to be like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> anywhere, anywhere. It's, it's an in group signaling. They just have no idea that that is what it is. Yes. They don't understand their own instinct. That's really been what uh, I've been depressed about the past week. Is um, I think I, I posted this on Twitter the other day, but yesterday, the, earlier this week, I was talking to a friend of mine. She said, uh, well, I said, is it me or is almost everyone mentally ill? And, and I <laughs> I'm like, like, I'm okay with whatever's wrong with me. Like, I've come to terms with it. <laughs> but I mean, is it me or is it, is this, she says, well, it's like your physical health or your physical fitness and your mental fit, health and fitness. This is the same fucking thing as all of us have something fucking wrong and every every one of those domains. <laughs> uh, what's the definition of mental illness? Say again? What's the definition of mental illness? Um, that's a great question. I would classify it as reinforce it as a as the tendency to double down on something you have no no uh, that uh, I, don't know, I have to think about how to put it in words. But these people keep double. It's like the mass thing where they just double down, double down, double down, and double. Is it that Einstein's quote about insanity? Yes, yes. It's cooperative dysfunction. Yeah. Well, all of all of those, all of those um, metrics for for health and in, in, in across all domains, they're they're all scales. They're all spectrum, right? From one hundred percent sick to one hundred percent healthy, right? And so nobody's ever going to one hundred percent sick is dead, right? 100% healthy is, is perfect. Nobody's going to be perfect, right? So everybody is in a suboptimal state of health along all domains. Yeah. Just how far across that, that spectrum are they? Right? Almost nobody's perfect in any, in any way, shape, or form when it comes to their biological expression, right? So we're trying to maximize our position on each of those dynamics towards the health, bias ourselves as much towards the healthy side as we can. You're mentally ill if you can't function inside of the group that sustains your health and well-being. Currently, we have a dysfunctional but, society. But then maybe you can join a different group where you won't be mentally ill. Well, that's what I would hope for people. We have ways out of being what we call, you know, what we call now mentally ill. But like, we put people who have ADHD in that category. Their, their sickness and dysfunction, but these people don't have dysfunctional minds. They have an environment in which their mind isn't suitable. It's a great way of framing it. Oh, What's we put you? boys in school, they're not suitable for the schooling that we put them through, and it makes them dysfunctional. We know, you know if you suppress play in mammals that they don't develop a prefrontal right. cortex. Like, right. We know that, and we still put them in classrooms sitting down. Okay, well. Well, we don't, don't want them to grow into man, do we? <clears throat> Self-determination well, is a... It's, it's interesting because, you know, in the last, I don't know, a couple of decades, we've actually made some significant strides in that area in zoos. We mm. recognize that animals in dysfunctional environments themselves become in, in dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. And so zoos have put the effort into trying to make their artificial environments as close to their natural environments as possible and that's done wonders to the mental health of the animals in those environments they're much less dysfunctional than they were 
prior to this, but we don't apply that same knowledge to our, to our, our ourselves. <laughs> I, I watch, I watch, uh, sorry, Martin, you go. We'd be better off putting kids into zoos than into yes, school. We would. Uh, <clears throat> I watch people go through, uh, like, and that's that's what I do. Yeah, anxiety ridden, like uh, anxious bouts, and then depression yeah. on the social commons all the time because it happens in you know three to six month bouts, and you can watch them move through those behaviors. That's the same thing as a predator pacing back and forth yeah. in a cage. It's the same. You know, we watch old people with puppies, right? And it works, right? Or any old any person who's alone with a pet. <clears throat> My favorite examples that put tortoises in with chimpanzees had the same fucking effect. Well, the chimpanzees will fit there, sit there, and they'll share their snack with a fucking tortoise. Why? Because a tortoise isn't fast, isn't threatening. Right? It gives you attention, right? It's not harmful. It's basically a puppy for those things. Right? <clears throat> and they get a whole new behavior, right? I mean... <laughs> What about those? Yeah. Go ahead. Well, we were talking about you know how, how we're defining men mental illness, right? That that's that. What I was getting at is that that's the, the definition I use. It's the inability to navigate your environment. We always assume that the mental illness though is sourced in the human. Instead of taking a look, is is it the environment that's the source of the mental illness, right? But it's still that's the mental illness. So, uh, yeah, I think that's the consequence. My call. I'm trying to think about it while we've been talking here. Yeah. And I think the the con the cause it's the consequence. The cause I think is um, na uh, narrative defense. You're you're telling yourself a falsehood that that does not correspond to reality, in order to protect a prior, or a weakness, or a vulnerability, or trauma, or something, <clears throat> or an or, or as we know in women is neurosis. I'm just trying to stop worrying. So I think that's the cause, and then this makes you unable to navigate your world because there there's a non-correspondence between your thinking about the world and the consequences of your action. Or I suspect that I, I'm watching your eyes to see if that rings true or not. And I, I think uh, you can't tell. Uh, that's that's a definition of mental illness. That's a regular feature of feminine brain. <laughs> okay, well we know what the problem with women is: is that you know, forty percent of them are mentally ill at any one given point. So, and the rest, uh, the, the and all but twenty percent of them can't think rationally. It's the twenty percent that we ought to be. Ooh, we talk about the up the women preferring the twenty percent of uh, ten or twenty percent of men, right? And and we forget that mm -hmm. men prefer the twenty percent of women. The problem is those sorticians are. Not those artisans don't pair off very well. Yeah, and we, we're happy to settle, and they aren't. We'll settle for crazy. <laughs> well, my my my, re my reply to that goes back to the, the last conversation we had too. Is that we've not had an environment that supports the mental health for women in centuries. So right. we don't even know what that looks like anymore. It looked really good until. Well, if you take the fucking plague out of it, okay, I mean, the plague is a fucking nightmare, right? But, but if you go from uh, 14 to 1700s, you know, we always look back at it and say, well, we're much better than them. Eh, I'm yeah. so sure that's true. Yeah, there's, there's, <laughs> there's, there's, there's been times when we've gotten much closer to nature's feedback where we've all gotten a lot healthier in alignment with what it means to be male and female. Those that didn't die, yes. Yes. Well, I mean, there was a great, somebody sent something around about a map of Hamburg, middle, uh, 16, 15 or 1600s. Right, your typical drawing of Hamburg. It might have been a little bit later, maybe closer to 1700s or something. And, you know, if you go to one of those places, all you know, everything's walkable. Hmm? Right? You, you, can, you're, you can build a social reinforcement structure People don't, you know, some people travel, like, right? But, you know, people travel usually not too far. And when they do, they come back to a stable relation. Right. Same thing I noticed with my friends in Germany, you know, like their, their grandma still lives in the fucking same house, right? I mean, they go to grandma's for 
which is the same village that their mom is in. So it's like we forget that they're, they're, the Europeans are actually more provincial than we are because we move around so much. Uh, we've actually become more like urban, disconnected urban people, even though if we don't live in, a, in an urban environment, simply because we've been moving. So I, I look at this, and I'm like, I don't, I don't see people mentally healthy at all since the Industrial Revolution. No, I agree with that. I don't see it at all. I see desperate right. attempts to create mental health. Right, yeah. But I, I don't see uh, uh, people being actually mentally healthy. And the thing that you guys cued me into, which was the class thing, is I've become so aware of how useful and important class is. But just knowing what your class is and what the responsibilities of that class is, just so you have the ability to say, I'm virtuous at this scale. Yeah. <clears throat> Not that you're it's a, a, it's a it's a foundation for mindfulness. Right. I mean, not a just, production just, of it, but it's a foundation of it. Right. You're not left behind. You know, you're not bad because you can't be a fucking, you know, doctor or lawyer. What is it? Thinker, tailor, soldier, sailor, rich man, poor man, beggar man, thief. But you don't, you're not left behind because you, but if you know what the virtue is for your labor class, working class, lower middle class, middle upper, if you have these things and you teach people that, it's like, well, then it's all duty, right? You're doing your duty at the scale you're capable of. And if you decide that you want to be capable of more, just try. Nobody's going to stop you. A great video of floating around the internet right now, some black guy going postal on some uh, educa education board saying, no white person ever kept me down. Look, I'm, look, I got you guys working for me, right? I mean, like, <laughs> I keep hearing this from black guys all the time. I don't see white people keeping me down. Well, of course, it's the middle class white guys, the black guys, because they're they're not they're not there. There's nobody keeping them down. We'd prefer everybody was like you, right? The class thing ends up being all this, all these touch points, one of these things that allow me as an individual. To know I'm okay. And we took them all away with these lies. We stopped measuring and judging. It's a lack of measurement and judgment. Yeah, but they don't have any to self measure either. So all they think of themselves as oppressed or downtrodden or whatever is like. Relative to what they do are delivered daily, they are. Do middle class men look down on working class men? Middle, I don't. Uh, no. I don't think so. I think they envy them. I think there's a respect there. I know there is for me. Um, I think the problem is when you don't, you're not responsible. I think uh, middle class men that have no perception of their own position look down on lower class men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so like the whole, the entire credentialed class, right? That that believe their credentials provide them. A higher place in the class yes, than that's the right answer. They, it's the credential problem. Yes. Thank and you. then there's middle class woman. Of course. That's it. That, that, at the moment, that's just a credential class. Yeah. Well, that's right. We just. Oh, did you have to say that and ruin my fucking night? <laughs> Karen is a credential. That that's horrible. Oh, it's it's also true. I mean, what percentage of the credential class, which is, in other words, not meritocratic, is female? Most. Which versus what percentage of the demonstrated competent class? Yeah, 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 yeah. Holy shit, that's fucking. See, Luke, you my best. fucking evening. That's going to be spinning around the back of my fucking head for the next three days. I'm a little, I'm a little disappointed we didn't do this in the morning. Then I could have ruined your whole day. <laughs> So uh, Martin asked the smart question of what's mentally ill. What gets me really upset is the guys on the right 
who latch on to something that they feel is moral is a moral vindication that's nonsense. They hold on to it like a woman holds on to an emotion. And if I could figure out how to solve that problem, uh, my frustration with the right would be eliminated. It's one thing to be hold on to your Nazi thing. It's another whole thing you hold on to your church thing. I'm okay with those two. I'm hold on okay with the ethno nationals thing. I'm sort of on that board too, right? I mean, I just kind of be around our guys, but um, but what is this like grabbing crazy shit out of left field, like? Some obscure philosophy, or you know, I'm I'm not trying to pick on the conspiracy theory guys, but the guys just pick on conspiracy theories. You just grab onto this thing like a fucking dog and hold on. Why? Because it's a way of moral. We call it uh, exegesis or getting it rid of it, getting rid of it. When Quentin Tino, Tarantino said something beautiful in an interview. Oh, it was last year. He said, when he was asked about the violence in his movie, he says, well, if you do it right, it provides a catharsis for the audience because we're all fucking frustrated. Right? And if we have it happen on screen, that comes out of us. And so, so to me, I'm helping the audience have that experience of catharsis. And I'm like, that was fucking genius. Right, I mean, he's actually looks at that's how he looks at movies. Uh, see, we call sequences is what emotion is this provoking, and what sequence of these things do I have to produce? And stuff. Um, like, I, I learned to treat movies like comic books, like illustrated novels, right? and that's how I was trained, right? And so it's much more telling the story, uh, dramatically point of view but you're relying on the story what his thing is he's actually got these uh these very intensely emotional scenes that get the people it's like fuck this full emotional so so that brings me back to well is that what our guys are doing is that they're holding on to this dog this chew toy because it's the only way they can get emotional catharsis is that what's going on because I prefer it's, 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 them, I prefer not to call them crazy, which is what Martin is. Uh, I'm sure Martin <laughs> is going to jump on me for. So or mentally ill because that's what I that's how I interpret it. Well, my problem is was really with calling women mentally ill for failing to think like men. Yeah, but then we're still wrong because it's not thinking like men, it's thinking like adults. Which is like men. Yeah, okay. It's so, okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can ruin my that, day. That, ruin that, my that's day. how far some, some of these guys have to go before they start to feel any sense of regulation. Okay, that's got it. The there's discord there's... is so strong that that's how far they have to go out to start regulating. <laughs> Say that again. That's really smart. So the discord in the environment, the, the, right? They're, they're confronted with so much clown world, and they they don't they've never built up the emotional the skills of emotional regulation, attention regulation, things like that. They haven't built those skills, so they have to go that far out before they can start getting any sense of regulation of those mm -hmm. of those states. Says they see how much the mainstream media and academia is lying about. So this girl was earth out out there lying. What, what about else are they everything. lying about, right? They're lying about right, everything. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. When, when, you, when you build those skills, you can stand in that storm and not be dislodged, right? When you don't have that skill set naturally or, or by development, right? Then you have to step outside of that storm before you can start applying self regulation in any way, shape, or form. And that's where they're finding it, it is in those conspiracies or in those outlandish ideals and something. Like that. That's where they start to feel any sense of stability so they can start. Re you know, self-regulating in that environment. Really not different from a shit test. No. So they're looking for oh, a limit. Wait, it's just wait, harder wait, to give wait, them. Wait, wait. Complete that thought. What's not different from a shit, shit, shit test? Men pushing limits based on their universal frame of reality. This has to be right. It's just, it's a shit test. Can you break oh, this? Like, and they're going to... 
and they're going to defend it like it's. <clears throat> That's exactly what it is. Well, I, that was fucking smart. Yeah. You guys come up with amazing shit once in a while. Someone ought to. Actually, I, you know, I, th I think any dysregulated human is going to shit test like that. Yes. Okay, so let, let's, 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 let's get, I gotta get that. I, I've pointed this out before. Unless you're fully true before faith, then your worldview is your demonstrated interest too. Yes. Yeah, it, it forces you into that state of dysregulation all the time. You don't have that underlying truth there to, to stand in. Imagine the insanity of that. <laughs> Every single thing that comes into your frame is pushing you around because you don't have <laughs> something like the truth to stand solidly in. That would it would make you nuts <laughs> all the time. It makes them nuts all the time. Yeah. Most people are dysfunctional, anxious, and insane most of the time, as far as I can. It's the context and other people that keep them relatively on the rails and the incentives that yeah. the exportation of sanity is gifting them. Yeah. And norms are powerful because of that. We don't, we don't have to be angry with people, but they're not leaving us much choices. <laughs> we what? We what? Be happy with uh, angry with people? I said they're not leaving us many choices. Yeah, but we said we, yeah. that's the but. What's the first part? We don't want to be, we aren't. Yeah, I don't want to be, but. Angry is expensive. Authority is expensive. Making people do stuff is expensive. If they choose to do it correctly, that's cheap. Inexpensive. Cheap makes it sound like I'm trying to get one over on people. I'm not. It is cheaper when people know how to make the optimal cooperative decision based on something that scales beyond their intuition. Because... Their intuition doesn't scale beyond a certain point, given their maturity. Not necessarily. So, go ahead. It Mark. depends on how that intuition is trained. But exactly. I intuition agree. absolutely can and should be trained. And you should not trust your gut until you can train it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And you can train the intuition to scale. Yeah. Yes. So, so you can train your intuition to scale. Yes. Yeah. Authority is expensive. Making people do stuff is expensive. They do it themselves. It's just as costly. So we don't want to be angry, but they're giving us no choice. So I'm not making the connection. We're going to have to make them do it right. They don't do it right on their own. Because the externalities are too great. At the scales that they're operating at. And you can take the big arenas we pick on all the time. Academia, the media, politicians, the bankers. <laughs> I know people are just following their incentives. Bad set of incentives. I'm unsure that they can change incentives. How do you guys maintain peace of mind? Why and why am I the one that seems to lose my shit all the time? I sit here and I go over this stuff, and it's just like I was thinking about today. I'm like, okay, somebody said, well, you know, uh, Peterson or whatever, you should talk to these guys. And I'm like, well, if I was going to talk to Peterson, how would I lay it out for him? Because he knows all the material. Right. If I had a whiteboard, I would just break these columns down. But I mean, um, 
And this, I think this solution set is the kindest. Huh? Our solution set is the kindest solution. By would, by yeah. far. It's true. He would say his is more kind, but he's wrong. Right. Yeah. It's more it's not even half it's not his problem is it's not honest. I don't know, no one's pushed him. Trying to give people the benefit of the doubt. It's hard against all the demonstration that they give, but they're also being rewarded and paid and so on for demonstrating in that manner. And he's demonstrating double standards and unwillingness to cross lines that need to be crossed. Yes. Is he bold enough to be the first person to cross them? Because no one else has crossed them that has that many people following them. I mean, there's a there's a drag or a, a burden when you carry an audience, which is why I don't like them. I don't know. Like you know. <laughs> yes. Yes. I don't. Uh, the uh, <laughs> the people responsible for allowing adults to reach adulthood and still be children are dead a couple generations ago, mm -hmm. right? largely. They're the ones I'm angry at, right? Mm -hmm. Right now I'm in the state or the process. So, you know, I take the responsibility of, I'm trying to produce pathways back to adulthood for as many people as I can. Mm -hmm. Once the, once I've exhausted that, and then people have a choice to choose adulthood and they choose not to, then they get my anger again. But right now I'm not, a, I'm not angry at kids for being kids. Yes. Any more well, than I can be angry at a dog for being a dog. Yeah. I don't mistake them for adults, though. You often do. That's what makes you so frustrated. Okay. Uh, what you're saying is I have wishful thinking. That's, that's my sin. I, I think, I think, I don't even know if it's wishful thinking. I think you're still seeing a lot of what they're doing as them doing wrong rather than them being immature or them being undeveloped. And it is, it's, it's not, it's not optimal. It's suboptimal what they're doing, but were they ever taught any other way? Mm. You know, I mean, I, I, I'm one of, I'm one of those kids that grew up mostly without a father. So I understand what it means to grow up without a father. And I'm looking around at the world and the world looks like a bunch of people, even if they had a male around, they still effectively grew up mm -hmm. without a father. That's what the whole world looks like to me, <laughs> at least the whole mm. West. So I have some compassion for that. And I'm willing to exhaust that compassion before I step back into anger. So I see, I still see the map. I see the world. I see. We all tend to treat ourselves as sort of average or normal or something. So I see my, the world through the eyes of their my opposing intellectuals. Yes, and so I see the world as as malevolent as I am trying to counter them, and so I let this trickle down to my interpretation of the 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 people who have no choice because they have no experience or tra training or knowledge to be otherwise. Uh, human frailties we all have. <sighs> A lot of well, them. there are those there are those malevolent actors out there, right? There's all of these people out there, but we're talking about what's the what is what's the overarching you know incentive here? What's what's the dysfunction? What do we what what's in the environment that shouldn't be in the environment? You know, it's, yeah, and there's people leading on those too. I mean, there's the people that act, absolutely benefit from those you know the, the, those dysfunctions in the environment and push yeah. that and have been pushing it for generations. You know, so that's yeah, all of that's in play. But. Yeah, the environment itself is malevolent. Yes. Yes. Okay. I think the other piece is that um, uh, we tend to, the other thing is that Aspies tend to treat everybody as a peer. Right? And every, you know, and Aspies want people to be a peer. Right? And so I'm looking through these lenses, and that's why it's getting to me. Do I think I can correct that? You don't need to. That's what we're looking for. Uh, that's what we are for.
it's much easier the way you look at it. <laughs> yes. It's pretty painful. We also offer the tools to fix it. That's cognitive scaffolding. <laughs> We have so many. I was thinking that we go through the. If we pick literally, if somebody okay. were to shotgun us about every policy, any policy across this, we actually can answer every fucking question. And nobody knows that. Yet. And if we, if we don't. And there's almost no moral question we can't answer. And what we do is if we don't can't answer it, we sit around together and like, how do we write a proof for this? Because we know we can figure it out. So the problem is who's really disappointed here? Well, in, in what? The only people that can be disappointed are the hard left because they can't face their status. That's the real problem, right? With their status. Are you thinking that through? Mm -hmm. I don't know. What? I don't know. I can't say that it's false. Uh, so they built, because you, you'll see people who built up these left wing narratives. And it's just such a bunch of, it's a bunch of self reinforcing storytelling. And I think, you know, you watch it, you watch a, uh, Lindsay try to disambiguate it into its causal properties. I'm not sure that it's not, I'm not sure that it's not grounded in their ability to like use their obfuscation to keep credentialed and keep their income coming so that they can act in the world in an agentic fashion. I mean, I think it's tied to their incentives, not if you remove the incentives, I don't think they have an option but to fall in line. Yeah, I mean, you, you listen to these, even a 30-year-old feminist, right, arguing her point, it's, 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 there's no operationalist language she's using. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's all this, uh, conspira it's basically conspiratorial language. It's another form, it's, it's emotional conspiracy theory that she's running on. And you listen to this language, and Lindsay's sort of dis trying to disambiguate it. And he's like, well, it's reducible to the, these basic things, right? But, you know, that actually, that dis disambiguating that mess was actually fairly difficult. Because it's it's actually hard to figure out what they're even talking about. Um, you know, they, they, what it consists of actually is a series of accusations, right? Not descriptions. And so I'm listening through it and I'm like, I hear a bunch of accusations. But, I, but that's an assumption. In other words, that's, it's all by suggestion. It's the assumption of motive. Whereas you just say, well, that assumption, I don't want to get into this whole thing, but the, I mean, I, I, I'm like, well, we've been talking for an hour and a half now. I don't want to go down. Um, uh, is that, uh, that it's, it's just critique, right? It's just really systematized series of accusations, but they're not, they don't propose an alternative solution, but they're not proposing one. And if they did, they would say, we want, female superiority. That's what it would amount to. And so, uh, you know, the problem is it's so desirable. It's like if you hear scripturalist talk, right? It's all, there's all these assumptions that any of the basis of any of it's true. Well, you know, and it's, it's fucking it's clown world, right? Uh, if you see people do it with Platonism, right? You know, these ideals is is it's the the assumptions that anything that the premises it's based on are true. And if you look at the basis of this of their accus accusatorialism, which is what we should probably call it, um, uh, this feminine woke whatever it's accusatorialism, it's 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 just no foundation there. It's like the argument I had today with people about the. Which are you, we've recited a hundred times on here, right? Which is the argument about col colonization. Well, we, we did it bad. We could have done it better. We didn't do it perfect. But we drag your ignorant, suffering, supernatural, you know, uh, poverty-induced fucking 
peasants out of ignorance, you know, and, and into modernity against kicking and screaming and you fucking hate us for the fact that you have hamburgers. Right. I mean, yep. it, it, it is, I get tired of hearing the complaints about col colonialism. I'm like, well, I mean, I mean, there's a cost to fucking everything. We learned that colonialism doesn't work. Thank you very much. It was costly and we didn't make a profit at it. And that's why we gave up on it. Uh, and we decided this way, which was to seduce you into trade was way better. Okay, because that way we're not responsible for you. We're baiting you into it instead of forcing you into it. Okay, we came up with a new method. But you're, you look at anybody who wasn't colonized versus somebody who was, and they're way shittier condition than the people who were colonized. So, well, it doesn't mean we did it right or good, right? It just means that we did move you forward. Well, no, no, that matters because their complaining gets rewarded, so they'll keep complaining. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> the, Martin, you know whole... you, you're you're um you're so honestly pessimistic. I mean, your measurement of the human spirit is so accurate; it almost vaporizes every bit of positive incentive I have to try, but. I'm, I'm I'm that stubborn that I'll keep going. And... Uh, I, I assume by default that stated preference and revealed preference have nothing to do with each other until I see it. <laughs> <laughs> On the people you're talking about with Lindsay, you know that whole I don't know the whole progressive left, all that. They they have always sounded to me like a 12, 13, 14, 15 year old arguing with their parents. I hate you. You don't understand me. You just don't listen. I mean, it's just, it's all, it's those arguments at scale is all I hear whenever I hear anything on the left, right? Well, the the hard part is the time preference of the team. Right. Right. They just want the, they want the response, they want the, the, they want now, right? Instead of later. And we're like, well, it comes later, but you know, We've already been through that stage. That's why I say we should, you should like, I, I started working really young and it it's it makes a big difference in your ability to self-reward and understand the world because you don't get this pent up frustration. So you don't rebel as much. Um, and so I see so many kids that we, they would just be better off if they started working at 12. You know, it doesn't matter if you're bagging shit at the supermarket or pulling carts out of the supermarket. Park, it doesn't matter what you're doing. Sweeping floors. You know. Me and my nine-year-old self picking flowers, flower arrangements out of the cooler and taking them out to the car and tying them down, little stands so they didn't tip over and keeping track of which delivery was next and telling the driver where he had to go next. It was fucking nine. But I'm like, you know, by the time you're fucking ten, you understand how business works. Oh, I see. Flowers are expensive and they die. <laughs> Not all perennials survive when Kurt's watering them. <laughs> you know, the, the fun was Christmas trees, selling Christmas trees, because everybody's in a good fucking mood. Okay, what else we got here? We we killed this issue. We killed a bunch of issues. Yeah. Yeah, this is a good thing. Um, so, uh, trying to get. So, my understanding is that the forgiveness that uh, Musk and the team are doing is for accounts with ten thousand followers and up. And so it's gonna it's gonna be a while. We're getting a lot of play off of me posting what you said about shit testing. But you just rewired my brain. That's the second one in just a minute. Um, so, um, shit, I lost my train of thought. Sorry, guys. Oh, uh, 10,000. So I, I want to get Martin back on there, is what I'm really saying. Now, you, have you got a new IP address, Martin? You're in a new IP address. Right? I'm sure I've opened it from this one before. 
Have you? I'll try a new Gmail address and, and try again and see soon. I don't know. Give it a week or two. I don't know the scope of like how many profiles were purged from Twitter over the over the time in which they were purged. I don't wouldn't be able to guess at the number. I don't know it. It's hard to know because they they have they have a spammer problem, which means there's lots there's lots of purged accounts. Yes. Right? So uh, the problem is probably knowing so it, it's not the accounts that were purged, just the accounts that were um, that were reported right and closed for some other reason, right? Mm -hmm. Let's see. I haven't really seen it get really negative. I didn't know Sargon of Assad's back on. Right? I mean, Lindsay's back on. They're not getting you know, Peterson's back on. Peterson's fucking going wild. Um, Lindsay's going wild. Lindsay's a fucking man. fucking funny guy. God damn it. He's, he's, he's funny. The shit he comes out of his mouth. Okay, Groover is like the dumbest one, but still. I'm, just, I'm not getting tired of it yet. It's funny every time. Even still. when I come back, I'm still blocked by Lindsay. You're still blocked by Lindsay? Just create a new fucking new fucking account. See if that works. Anyway, so Trump's back on, but he's not he's not said anything, right? No. The restraint on him. I think he's just trying to support his other investment. We all make errors. All right, I got, I got, I think that's all. We, got an hour and a, we only got an hour and a half out of a meeting today. Usually we can go two, but I got nothing. Anything else? So you had, you had a whole list of topics for staff meeting on Twitter. That I saw. No, those are those are uh, previous meetings. I uh, see. There are previous meetings, and then uh, I just put the couple of them out for today. Okay. Uh, and they love that shit. I don't know. This is fucking awesome. They do love it. All right, guys, that's all I got. I don't can't say anything else smart tonight. <laughs> Thanks for the talk. Good to see you guys. Love you guys. Uh, I'll get that biz taken care of this week. Excellent. I'll let you know, Martin. Right.